Hi, I'm Chris Kunze with HDPE Solutions. Welcome to segment two of the Alliance's series on repair. With me today, I have Dustin Cote with Strongbridge Tega. And what he's going to be doing is not only a new installation, but also a repair. What, what he will be doing is tying in a two inch lateral to a four inch main employing electric fusion. So with that, I give you Dustin. Thanks, Chris. So we saw how our squeezing tool can reduce or stop the flow of fluid through the line in order that we can now do a lateral connection. There's various methods that you can use to do a lateral connection, but in this kind of scenario, one of the easiest ways to do that lateral connection is with an electrofusion saddle. This fitting is self-powered. It has an electrofusion wire embedded into the fitting, which is fused using this processor, and it will melt the fitting directly to the pipe itself. After the fitting is fused and cooled, then we can use a cutter to cut into the pipe and then continue on with our lateral connection. The approach that we use to install our electrofusion saddle is simple. First of all, we have to prepare our pipe surface, and we do that by scraping the pipe surface to expose new material. We also clean that surface using isopropyl or ethanol alcohol. Then we attach our fitting using either bolts, screws, or a strapping system, depending on the fitting design. We fuse the fitting using our electrofusion processor, allow it to cool, and at that time, we've completed the installation and it can then cut any type of hole that we need inside the outlet to continue on our lateral connection. So at this stage, we have to identify exactly what angle and orientation we need to install our lateral connection onto the pipe. So in this case, I'll be installing this saddle in this particular location. The first step is we use a marker to mark the location where we wish to install the saddle. Why is that important? Uh, it's important, Chris, because we want to ensure that the angle and the exact location that we install the saddle is the one as per our specification or per the project. So we've marked our location of our lateral saddle, and now the next step is we have to prepare the surface by scraping. We'll do that by using a tool similar to this, which is a pipe peeler tool. The correct depth of peeling that we want to get off of the pipe surface is about nine to 12 thousandths of an inch. And this is typically what your peeling will look like after you've removed it from the surface of the pipe itself. Once we've done our scraping, now we want to use our isopropyl or ethanol alcohol to clean the surface to ensure there's no contamination or no dirt. And to do that, we'll use a lint-free rag or paper cloth. Does it matter what kind of alcohol you use? It's important to use isopropyl or ethanol alcohol. We don't want to use any other type of material because in many cases it may have additives that we're unaware of which could uh, impact the success of the fusion. So we apply the alcohol generously and we ensure we clean that pipe area in the zone where the fitting will be fused. We're also going to clean the underside of the fitting itself in the same manner. It's important to ensure that all of the alcohol evaporates completely before you attach the lateral connection to the pipe itself. Any moisture inside that connection could impact the success of the fusion. So now we've prepared our pipe surface, we've scraped and cleaned, and now we are orienting our saddle in the exact location that we wish to install it. Now in this example, I've shown the saddle pointing straight up from the ground. That may or may not be the case. Many laterals are actually parallel with the ground. But I've done it in this way just for ease of uh, showing it to you today. The next step that we'll use is we'll actually use, in this case, an underclamp. And we'll attach that down using a set of screws to the actual saddle itself. We want to make sure we get a tight seal. We want to make sure we have a very minimal, if any, gap between the pipe surface and the inside of the coupler on the main piece, which is in this area here, between the pipe and the saddle. So now we've tightened all four screws down and we've got the saddle hand tight. We can't move it just by applying gentle pressure against the saddle outlet. At this point, we want to make sure there's no gap between the saddle itself and the outside of the pipe. So we'll use a depth feeler gauge, and this one's set to 0.33 of a millimeter. 
and by using this gauge and trying to insert it into the space between the pipe and the saddle, we'll be able to verify that we don't have any type of a gap Now checking to ensure that we don't have a gap is absolutely critical. If there's a gap between the saddle itself and the pipe, there won't be complete fusion and it can lead to a failure in the installation. In this case I've checked, there's no gap. So now we can proceed to actually fusing the saddle itself. So now at this stage we have the saddle mounted and we'll be using our electrofusion processor to energize the fitting and fuse it permanently to the outside of the pipe. So the processor is now doing a self-diagnostic test and it's passed that test and it's asking me now to connect the fitting. And we'll do that using these extensions on the processor itself. Are those extensions universal? Uh, Chris, they typically are. In this market, there are two sizes, 4.7 millimeter and 4.0 millimeter. And almost every processor that's out there will come with both. And processors are typically uh, universal and are usable with various brands and manufacturers fittings. Now we use the scanner to scan the barcode of the fitting, which will tell the processor the size, time, and voltage to fuse the fitting to the pipe. So I just verified on the screen of the processor and it's confirmed the size, time and voltage that's written on the barcode on this fitting. So essentially at this point all that's left to do is just hit start. The processor is verifying the fusion parameters and now it's beginning the fusion. So now the processor is finished fusing the saddle to the pipe and it also shows on the display and confirms the same information that's written on the fitting itself that the cooling time is 15 minutes. And the cooling time is the period of time at which no stress or any movement should be put towards the saddle itself because the material is still melt in between the pipe and the saddle. So could you take the un under saddle off after the fusion process is done? You can do that after the cooling time if you wish. Most people would just leave it there. Once the cooling time has elapsed, now we're able to cut our coupon into the pipe itself using a hole saw and a drill. Being careful while we're doing that cutting, not to cut into the wall of the saddle outlet itself. Okay, well thank you Dustin for explaining how to install an electrofused lateral on a four inch main. And thank you for watching the video.